Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. We're back again. Not a soul on the coach, huh? Just me. And I pretty near didn't make it. Don't blame me. How many times have I told you not to sit near an open window when we're going around Dead Man's Curve? I only <laughs> fell out twice this week. <laughs> Do you realize that it's been nearly a month since we've had a single guest? Golly, I don't remember it ever being this bad. You no, know, we usually get a few salesmen around this time. I was hoping to do some business so I could afford to go into bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, Kate, don't worry. Your luck will change. Yeah, it's always the darkest before you lead a horse to water. <laughs> Thank you. I guess. And remember, every cloud has a stiff upper lip. <laughs> Thank you. And... <laughs> Say the service is pretty prompt around here. Well, you, you startled me. I haven't heard that bell ring in so long. Oh, where did you come from? I didn't hear the train come in. I took the bus and walked in from Steuben's Bluffs. You... Well, that's some walk, Mr... Uh... Reynolds, I, uh... I'd like a room. Do you have a vacancy? The whole hotel. Pick a number and you can take your room. All right. Um... Walked all the way from Steuben Bluffs, huh? Well, it was a beautiful day, and walking's my hobby. Then you're gonna like room five. It's upstairs and clear to the back. May I have a look at it? Oh, certainly, Uncle Joe. Oh, this is my Uncle Joe. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Carson. Yeah. Uh, would you show Mr. Reynolds room five, please? Show it to him. Yes, I'd like to look at it. I just took a look at it. It's still there. <laughs> Uncle Joe, would you please show Mr. Reynolds the room? Okay, okay. How'd you get here? The train didn't come in. I took the bus and I walked in from the road. Oh? Seems to me a man coming into the hotel should... Uncle Joe, Mr. Reynolds likes to walk. It's his hobby. The room? Walking ain't my hobby. <laughs> This is the key to the cellar door. May I? You're wasting your time. Take a locksmith to get into it. Yeah. How would you do this? It's simple when you know how. <laughs> well, this is fine. This is lovely. I'll take this. Okay, but you got to come down and sign the register. Uh, I'm a little tired now from that long walk in from the road. You didn't say why you didn't come in by train. I know I didn't. I'll be down to register after I take a nap. There's a state law that says a guest must register when he checks in a hotel. Well, I hate to disagree with you, but the law states the guest must register within 12 hours of checking in. I'll be down long before that. Now, if you don't mind, would you go down to get my bags from the lobby? 12 hours, huh? huh? 12 hours. <laughs> you sure about that? Yes, 12 hours. <laughs> Positively, it's 12 hours. <laughs> Telling you, Kate, there's something fishy about him. 
How did he know about that 12-hour loophole in the law about guest registering? He's probably a lawyer. Lawyer? <laughs> what he knows about the law, he's probably learned from breaking it. Oh, <laughs> Looks like he could be a lawyer. Who does? Mr. Reynolds. Who's Mr. Reynolds? I am. <laughs> you a lawyer? Uh, Mr. Reynolds, I'd like you to meet two of my daughters, Bobby Jo and Betty Jo. Hello. 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 Well, I thought the view from my room was beautiful, but it doesn't compare with the view down here in the lobby. Uh, These are the most beautiful young ladies I've ever seen. Why, thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you very much. Now, don't thank me. Thank the lady who passed her beauty on to you, your mother. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Reynolds, don't you go to turning our heads. Why not? I'm sure you'd all be beautiful from any angle. Mrs. Bradley, perhaps I could register now. Oh, sure. <laughs> You didn't come on the train, did you? He parked his car on the county road and walked in. No, I took the bus and walked in. Uh, would this be enough for a week in advance? That's enough for a month in advance. <laughs> Fine. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you very much. See? See how sneaky he is? He pays in advance so he gets you off guard. <laughs> Gee, Mom, it looks like your luck has really changed. Yeah, it's like baseball. Sometimes you have a losing streak, and then somebody comes in with a run, and before you know it, you won the game. <laughs> that makes sense. So why don't we all pitch in and spruce up the other rooms, huh? What for? For the guests that are going to be coming. Kate, I wouldn't build up my hopes too high. Mrs. Bradley, are you expecting any other guests? Well, uh... I'd like to reserve the entire hotel. About... I think that could be arranged. Suppose you realize that to hold all them rooms until your friends get here is going to cost you your arm and leg. Well, would, uh, would $200 cover it? Oh, yes. <laughs> One dollar more and you'd be the new owner. <laughs> but you don't have to pay in advance. Uh, you, you pay when you check out with your guests. By the way, how many are there going to be in your party? Just me. And that way I can be sure I won't be disturbed. <laughs> that money when you had the chance. He'll pay me later. He's perfectly honest. Honest? If he was honest, why would he want the hotel all to himself? I don't know. Maybe he's a... Uh... Well, he could have. Uh... Well, it's perfectly obvious. He's a... It's obvious he's a crook hiding out from the law. He's monopolizing those rooms so we can't rent them out to the detectives that are hot on his trail. <laughs> When the detectives get here, I'll put extra cots in your room. <laughs> oh, here he comes. Watch me give him this Perry Mason interrogation. Uncle Joe, I will not have you asking him a lot of nosy questions. Don't worry, Kate. The way I pump him, he won't even know he's being pumped. <laughs> well, uh, hello, uh, uh, Mrs. Bradley. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, sure is nice weather for traveling salesmen. It sure is. <laughs> Were you ever a traveling salesman? Me? No, oh, no, no. I thought maybe that's what you was. Oh, no. <laughs> But it certainly is lovely weather. Yeah. Yeah, the weather must be quite a change for you uh, coming from the east. Yes. <laughs> yes. I imagine it would be if I were from the east. It'd be, it'd be a bigger change even if you're from the west. Yes. Yes. It would be, yeah. Uh, but I'm not from the West. Oh, yeah, well, well, our weather's so nice, it'd be a great change even from the north or the south. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, this weather is such a change, I think I'll enjoy it by taking a walk in it. <laughs> he didn't say whether it's from the north, the south, or the east, or the west. You know what I think? He's from outer space. That's exactly what I thought. He's from outer... <laughs> How can he get from outer space on a bus? <laughs> All right, now. Farmer Brown has 200 white chickens and 250 brown chickens. The brown
brown chickens lay two and a half times as many eggs as the white chickens do. Total number of eggs Uncle laid Joe, in a please, week. Please, I think if I can just quiet, I'm concentrating. <laughs> Now, we'll let Y equal the number of eggs the white chickens lay and X the number of eggs the brown chickens lay. X and Y. It's always X and Y. Why can't these guys come up with some other letters? <laughs> Why don't you try A and B? Well, if you don't use the same letters they've got, how do you get the right answer? <laughs> oh. Uncle Joe, it really doesn't matter Honey, what... don't argue with Albert Einstein. <laughs> okay. Now, what we have to do is find what X and Y equals. If I'm not intruding, X equals 1,250 and Y equals 500. Huh? How do you know? Uh, well, it's very simple. If you take... Uh... Sure, it's easy to come up with the wrong answer. And that's the wrong answer if I ever heard one. That's the correct answer, all right, Mr. Reynolds. It says so here in the back of the book. Well, thanks very much. Of course he knew the right answer. He read the book before. <laughs> Beautiful night out, Mrs. Bradley. Would you care to join me for a walk? Oh, I'd love to, Mr. Reynolds. Oh. <laughs> Probably a bookkeeper at Embezzley's company's funds. <laughs> uh oh, the pump again. Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Didn't you hear me calling you? Didn't you hear me not answering you? That means I'm busy. Well, unbusy yourself and fix the pump. It just went out again. What I'm doing is much more important than fixing the pump. Look here. I've got proof that Reynolds is a low-down skunk. Huh? See his signature on the register? Yeah. I'm analyzing his handwriting. So? See how he makes his E's with them big loops? Crosses his T's and dots his I's? Well, the book says that all them things show criminal tendencies. It does? I sure got him dead to rights this time, Kate. You know something? It looks just the same as this handwriting here. Yeah. Makes his E's with them big loops. Crosses his T's, dots his I's the same way. Yeah, that's the criminal type if I ever saw one. This is the shopping list you wrote last week. <laughs> Want to turn yourself in? <laughs> you fix the pump. Kate, this should convince you what a low-down thief he really is. Tricking up his writing to make it look like it's written by someone as honest as me. <laughs> well, sure, I'll print it on the front page if it's a big enough story. Well, come on, tell me what happened. A bank robbery? The Benton Bank? When did it happen? Yeah? Uh-huh. How much is this can of hominy? $3,000. Boys, your price is going up. It seems to me Will that... you stop babbling? I'm talking to my foreign correspondent over at the county seat. The Benton Bank was robbed of $3,000. Well, I've got an alibi. I was with Charlie all the time. Nobody's accusing you. Now hush up. Hey, Sam, give me a couple of number 12 pump gaskets. You hush up, too. Are you still there? Yeah, well, now what is it? Oh, that'll make a big story over here. The bank robber was last seen heading this way. Bank robber? What bank robber? <laughs> what do you want to do that for? Because I got a bigger story for you. The capture of the bank robber. We got him over at the hotel. Like the time you had the spy over there and he turned out to be with the sheriff's department. <laughs> That's him. That's him, all right. Are you positive? I'm sure that I've been sure of anything in my life. Well, that leaves plenty of room for doubt. <laughs> now look here, Sam. Now, what Sam means is you better be pretty sure before you go accusing anybody of being a bank robber. Yeah, he'll sue you for every penny Kate's got. Now, what you ought to do, like, is uh, take a picture of him and send it to the authorities so you can be sure. Look, I don't need nobody to think for me. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is take a picture of him and send it to the authorities so I can be sure. <laughs> camera. The last time I saw it, it was in your room. Oh. What do you want it for? Take a picture of the bank robber. What bank robber? That Reynolds fella. Sam's running a story about the Benton bank robbery. Reynolds fits the description to a T. Brown suit, straw hat, six foot two. When Mr. Reynolds came in, he was wearing a gray suit and a felt hat. Man smart enough to rob a bank, smart enough to change his clothes. 
Is he also smart enough to shrink four inches? Mr. Reynolds can't be more than five foot ten. Probably pulled the job wearing high heels. Look, Uncle Joe, Mr. Reynolds is no more a bank robber than I am. So would you please forget everything before some squirrel comes along and tucks you away for the winter? Yeah, what I'll be tucking away is the reward money I'm getting. They're offering $500 reward for his capture. And one thing is sure, I've got his number, and he's going to wind up with one. You hurry up and get to my pictures. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Oh, here they are. Let's have them. That'll be 65 cents. This is official police business. Give me them. <laughs> sure is Harry looking for a bank robber. <laughs> That's the dog. <laughs> At least you'll be able to get his footprints. <laughs> Where's the rest of them? That's all that came out. Sam, you still got them handcuffs the sheriff left here until he pays his bill? Yeah, but I don't... Let me have them. I'm going to bring this guy in. Where's your proof? Any man that'd go through all them shenanigans to keep from getting his picture took has got to be guilty. <laughs> Gee, my aching back. <laughs> Never mind. It's good exercise for the figure. Mom, you've got to do something about Uncle Joe. What's he up to now? Well, he's hiding by the front door. He's got a pair of handcuffs in one hand and my baseball bat in the other. <laughs> he says Mr. Reynolds is a bank robber and he's going to capture him. I told him to stop playing cops and robbers, especially when there are no cops or robbers. <laughs> what are you going to do, Mom? Well, you know, Uncle Joe's pretty hot-headed. And I think I figured out a way to cool him off. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, have you seen Mr. Reynolds? He was sweet enough to chop this wood for me, and I want him to chop some more. Chop wood? You shouldn't be trusting that fiend with an axe. <laughs> oh, he doesn't use an axe. He, he chops it with his hands. He's a karate expert. What? <laughs> Karate expert? Oh, yeah, you should see him. Chop, chop, chop! <laughs> oh, what are you doing with the baseball bat? Oh, I, I was going to play a little baseball. And the handcuffs? Uh, that, that was in case I caught somebody trying to steal the base. <laughs> <laughs> karate expert, huh? Chop, chop! <laughs> so? I decided to let my good friends share in the honor of capturing the bank robber. You still don't know for sure he is the bank robber. Joe, you didn't get his picture or nothing. How many times do I have to tell you I know it's him? Just to keep you from fretting, I'll take the full responsibility. I'm just giving you a chance to share in the glory. Do we get to share in the reward? Reward? What reward? The reward for capturing the bank robber, like it said in Sam's notes. Oh, that reward. Well, do we share? Okay, okay, I'll split it with you. You hear that, Sam? He's gonna split the reward with us. The only reward I expect is the big laugh. What big laugh? The one I'm gonna get when that Reynolds fella sues you for false arrest. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, fellas. Now, here's my plan to nab him. To throw him off guard, you'll all come over tonight for a band rehearsal. Oh, boy. When Reynolds comes down to listen to the music, I'll signal for you to stop. And Floyd, you walk around, stoop down behind him, and I'll push him. Well, if Sam don't come, it won't be much of a band rehearsal. Oh, who says I'm not coming? Somebody's got to look out for Kate and the girls. <laughs> now, remember, when he comes down to listen, I'll give you the signal, take five, and we'll go into action. Right? Oh, for Pete's sake. We'll do it. Mercy. And don't let on that we're wise to him. You ready? A one, a two. Three. <laughs> Mom! 
I know it's awful, honey. But it's better than his playing with a baseball bat and a pair of handcuffs. <laughs> such beautiful music. There's only one person. Has to be Mr. Reynolds. Wonderful. I'll say, you sure play pretty for a bank robber. <laughs> bank robber? And don't try to talk your way out of it. We got the goods on you and we got you surrounded. So if you don't want any trouble, you might as well give yourself up. Well, if that's your advice, I'd better take it. You're darn right, that's my advice. Now, you come along and don't try anything. <laughs> I believe they go this way. I think that'll hold you. All right, fellas, we'll go up and search his room, find the stolen loot. Oh, boy. Yeah. Boy, will you get up? You never pushed him. <laughs> Kate, this is man for Hold it, hold it. What are you rover boys up to? We gotta search the bank robber's room for the stolen loot. We've already captured him. He's handcuffed to the elevator in the lobby. Handcuffed to the ele... You are going right down and take those handcuffs off of him and apologize. You're gonna let him go? And then I might let you go. I'm telling you, Kate, you're making a big mistake. Did you hear the news? It just came over the radio. They captured the bank robber who robbed the bank in Benton. <laughs> you were telling me? <laughs> I thought you said you had him handcuffed. He did. Honest, Kate, he was standing right there. I don't see how he could have got away. You should have pushed him. <laughs> Mom, have you seen Mr. Reynolds? We passed by his room and his door was open and his things were gone. Well, I think Mr. Reynolds is gone, too. <laughs> he popped in from nowhere, and he's gone the same way. I'm gonna miss him. Me, too. Me, too. He was a wonderful man. You should have pushed him. <laughs> I guess we'll never know where he came from or what he does. I should have pushed him. <laughs> you women was taken in by Reynolds' good looks and syrupy talk, but I had him pegged as a crook right from the start. Yes, Uncle Joe, you've told us. Man that can open doors, work algebra, walk from Stuba's bluff, and knows karate. To me, that exposed his criminal tendencies. <laughs> Lloyd and Charlie just brought the city paper. Cape Kennedy just launched a new rocket. Let's see, Mom. Yeah, there's a picture here of the scientist who headed the project. A fellow named Lawrence. Lawrence? <laughs> Boy, that's our Mr. Reynolds. Oh, Uncle Joe, what were you saying about criminal tendencies? I'm gonna write that Dr. Lawrence a letter. And apologize. Let him know some shady imposter's opening handcuffs with his face. <laughs> presentation.